Today is National Chocolate Cupcake Day. Oh, look at that. There you go. Maybe you're thinking more savory than sweet. How about National Mashed Potato Day? <laughs> now, it is saying mashed potato, but there's no specificity on if uh, if it's the, the mashed potato and doing the dance oh, yeah. or eating mashed potatoes. I would imagine it's the food because today is also Meatloaf Appreciation Day. Damn. I love a good old loaf of meat. Do you? Yeah. I do. I haven't had meatloaf in a while. I take that back. I love my meatloaf. <laughs> oh, really? You're picky, yeah. you're picky about your loaf? Well, I don't order other people's meatloaf, so I, I don't know because I'm afraid it's not going to be as good as mine. So. Oh, if you're out. Yeah. Yeah. What about other people? What, what about? I can't remember ever being at someone's house and they're like, we're having meatloaf. Come on over for meatloaf dinner. <laughs> Which yeah. makes me feel really old that we still have meatloaf. But what do you mean? I mean, is that something like our generation is carrying on? Nah, I think people still like making loaves of meat. Okay. In Doesn't general. it sound gross though? Meat loaf. It does. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it's 13 days until Halloween and 19 days until daylight savings. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Daylight savings. Watch out. Damn it. Damn it. Daylight saving time ends. Correct. Say goodbye and say hello to nighttime darkness. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That's it. They've been threatening to make it permanent recently, right? I think so. Or make the daylight saving time, like what we're in now, they want to make that permanent, potentially? I think you're right. To which I say thumbs down. It should be standard time permanently, but whatever. I don't really have any pull in this area, I don't think. Right. I mean, other than this super popular radio show, of course. Right. Right, but, I mean, do we have an ear for the change makers? Maybe. Sure, yeah, because they could be listening around the world, except for, like, North Korea, at KJO1055.com, or the KJO app, or the Matt and Kate podcast, Kate. Right. All the places, all for free. Yeah, free. Matt, we've got some celebrities celebrating birthdays today, and I think you should guess their age. Oh, do, 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 do. Okay. Yes. How old is Zach Efron today? Zach Efron, uh, 42. Zach Efron is 35. Oh, damn. I was way off. Okay. Yeah. How about Neo? How old is Neo? Oh, Neo. Okay. Not, yeah. Not the character from Matrix. Correct. How old is the Neo? The artist that we play on our radio station. Yes. Neo, uh, 30. 43. <laughs> Butchering this on all ends. <laughs> I bet you get this one ready. Ready, uh, ready, ready. Okay. Jean-Claude Van Damme. You think I'm going to get Jean-Claude Van Damme's age? I think you're going to get more in the decade. <laughs> okay. 62. <laughs> Dang! On the dot. 62. Yeah. I know. Wait, see? I All you needed That's is right. a little bit of confidence. You got it. Boom. Okay. Nailed it. Far superior to Steven Seagal, but I hear that Chuck Norris could likely take him in a fight. I, and nine. Chuck Norris is much older, and I think he could take him in a fight, right? Norris taking Van Damme? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, last one. Mike Ditka. Ditka, Ditka, Ditka from... Mm -hmm. Chicago Bears fame. Duh, Bears. That's pretty good. How old is Mike Ditka today? Ditka, I will say, is 73. So close. Oh, uh -huh, damn. 83. That's not close at all. Well, it's 10 years. Okay. Like, you got the, the ones digit correct. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I got the three correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Victory. So, happy birthday. Thank you. I mean, it's not my birthday, but thanks for sharing the birthdays. I know, but you got Jean-Claude Van Damme. I'm impressed. Yeah. Do you like me some Van Damme? That kick that he does, that spinning kick makes no sense practically, but uh, still kind of cool. Yeah. Matt, lots in history today, and I think one of the items you're going to be very interested in. On this day in history, 1851, Moby Dick was first published. Okay. All right. Moby Dick. That one, yeah. obviously, you're like, mm, no thanks, Kate. Yeah, I don't think I've ever read it. <laughs> I haven't either. Hmm. But when I said one of these items interests you, I was thinking that I could read your mind and you go, I don't care about Moby Dick, but right. I just thought it was worth noting. Okay. 1898, 
United States took possession of Puerto Rico from Spain. And you're getting really gutsy with these accents. I know. Okay. But then, 1985, Nintendo released a Nintendo Entertainment System on this day in 1985. Yeah, it's a good system. That's the one that got you. Yeah. Still got mine. Still got mine. The original? Yeah. Nice. I have an original. And I'm too scared to use it on a regular basis. I'm going to break it, but... But it's the one from your childhood. Yes. Ah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. In fact, I just watched somebody restoring. A friend of mine was restoring a old Nintendo on Twitch the other night. Okay. And it was pretty interesting. Yeah. And I was like, I can't do that. I bought mine at a pawn shop. <laughs> and I think my brother has mine now. Okay. So yeah. it's probably, probably got some other people's hair and stuff in there, skin follicles. More than likely. Yeah. Mmm. Cyborg cockroaches, Kate. Say what? Cyborg cockroaches. You know what a cyborg is, right? A robot? It's like half robot, half actual creature. Oh, okay. Or 60-40, 70-30. Okay, okay. Whatever. And, oh, by the way, Cyborg, a great movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Speaking of Van Damme's 63rd birthday. Right? 62nd. 62nd 63rd? birthday, which we're celebrating. One of them. Yeah, okay, close enough. <laughs> it's his birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, so they have created, this is scientists in Japan, have created a cyborg cockroach, which they turned a regular Madagascar hissing cockroach into a real cyborg insect by connecting a lithium battery, a solar cell, multiple wires, and a tiny electronic circuit. So they can control this thing over Bluetooth. Oh. And it kind of messed up. Yeah. And those are big, the Madagascar hissing ones, those are big. Oh, really? I didn't know that you were familiar with... Well, I've seen them at the zoo. They gave me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, really? That's a zoo item? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Gross. The hissing cockroach. Does it actually hiss? Yeah. Did it hiss at you? Uh, it's behind the glass, so I don't know that I can hear the hiss, oh, but okay. let's be honest. I'm not sticking around looking at the cockroaches. I'm like, keep walking. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It says here six centimeters long. And, you know, since we're... USA here, I need to actually do some math. Six centimeters in inches. Get this metric out of here. Oh, yeah, 2.3 inches long. That's yeah, that's pretty gross. You would definitely notice if that guy was sneaking up on you with, like, a battery on his back. Yeah. Can you hear him coming? Yeah. Yeah. So their idea is that this type of thing, a cyborg cockroach that they could control remotely could go explore certain areas that obviously humans can't get to. Interesting. Yep. Not for like espionage? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I'm sure they're open-minded to ideas. Okay. That's what I pictured. I'm like, that's an interesting way to get intel. Yeah. Send in the cockroaches. Yep. Send them in. Matt, Samuel L. Jackson does not hold the most F-bombs in movies like you thought. He doesn't have the record that is? Does not. Like I thought, what are you accusing me of? I would have said Samuel L. Jackson. I thought maybe we'd have a united front. Like if somebody asked which actor has the most F-bombs, like, oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. I find that kind of surprising. I believe I'm recalling correctly that he was in more movies in the 90s than any other actor. Okay. I think that's right. So I need to guess then who, uh, is it Al Pacino? He's number two. Oh, so close. Oh, Sam Jackson's not even. Not even in the top five. Okay. Wow, really? Yeah, I think he's 20th place okay. on this list. I guess he is in a lot of more mainstream movies where he doesn't do that much cursing. Hmm, who else? There's could a it website be? called Crossword Solver. Yeah. And they took into account F bombs. And Al Pacino, who you guessed, is number two. Mm-hmm. Emil Jackson is 20th. Wow. Who's number one? Wow. Uh, who's num- who is number one? The most prolific, specifically F bombs? F bombs. Hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to th- it's got to be someone who's been around for a while, I would think. Mhm. Mhm. Eh. Well, is it Robert De Niro? Very close. Okay. You're on the right track and I know they're in several movies together. Hey, let's see. One more, I guess one more. Yeah, one more. Okay. Who has dropped more F bombs than anyone else in movie history? 
Harrison Ford. I know that's not correct, but that's <laughs> not correct. Joe yeah, Pesci. Not even close. Oh, Pesci. Joe Pesci says the F word 272 times in his various movies, but 241 of those F bombs, one movie. Home Alone. Not Home Alone. Oh, okay. Casino with Robert De Niro. Look at that. Yeah. So Al Pacino, number two. So those are older actors, right? They've yep. been around. Mm-hmm. Number three is Jonah Hill. Oh, okay. Jonah Hill, not that old. Right. Hasn't been around that long. 183 times. Prolific. Yeah, he could pass those guys. Yeah. If he uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, number four, with 144 times. Huh. And Seth Rogen, right behind, with 140 times. And shockingly, Samuel L. Jackson, 20th place, with an only 85 times dropping the F-bomb. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Well, thanks for this important news, Kate. I know. It's a shocker. It's a shocker. Hey, Kate, you can get a Mario Kart watch now. All right. Think that might be a cool gift for the kids? Possibly. Do they play Mario Kart on the watch? No, it's just Mario Kart themed. Oh, okay. And it's $25,600. Whoa. Yeah. From Tag Hewer? Tag Hauer? Hoya, maybe. Okay. It'd be the German pronunciation. But yeah, it is a, a quite fancy watch, as indicated by, you know, it going for 25600 bucks. Suggested retail price, though. So maybe on Black Friday, Ooh. you might be able to snag it. What makes it so expensive? Well, it's just like any watch, you know, like a Rolex or whatever. You know, those watches also go for twenty grand. Like, oh, it's like see through, so you can see the watch mechanism working. Also, okay. And I mean, come on, it's Mario Kart. Oh, now I'm looking at it. Okay. What do you think? Oh, and the watch band looks like tire treads. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I don't think that uh, that's going to be under the Christmas tree for the girls this year. Oh, okay. Even if they share? Even if they share. Yeah. Fine. Probably not. What about you? You're more of the Mario Kart enthusiast. It's kind of out of my price range as well. Uh, okay. I don't think I'm going to do it, no. But who knows? You know, I might have one too many some night and, you know, do one of those, you know, next day regret purchases. <laughs> mm. Actually, I don't think... Uh, hmm. Yeah, with all my credit cards combined, maybe I could get there. I don't know. Yeah. You'll have to look and see. Matt, you got to love the Florida man. Do I? I don't know. I mean, always thinking. This Florida man was 22, but got a nine-year-old to be his designated driver. <laughs> nah. Some nine-year-olds are pretty, you know, good. So long as- I mean... I can't imagine being nine and be like, yeah, I'll drive you home. I think I would be too scared. Yeah. So how'd that work out? How'd that turn out? Well, the nine-year-old boy got him home safe and sound, and he was getting ready to drive himself home when the neighbor was like, wait, 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 what? Called the police. And uh, the Florida man was charged with child neglect. And one case of being a Florida man. Yep. Do you think you could handle being a DD at nine years old? Mm, no probably not i was gonna say i don't even think i was on a riding mower by nine years old yeah i don't think i could have seen over the the wheel probably yeah <laughs> no. although was i on a riding mower i might have no i don't think so although yeah, maybe I I was... maybe i did maybe i could have given that guy a ride on a yeah lawnmower hmm. okay well in that case then yeah i guess i could right hop on the back buddy yeah let's go you see, Boda Box has a margarita now. Boda Box has margarita now? Boda Box. Yes. I heard this the other night on the Chiefs game. It's called Boda Rita. Oh. Yeah. Boda Rita margarita wine cocktail brings you award winning Boda Box wine paired with real lime juice and agave nectar. The result? A refreshing gluten free margarita wine cocktail on tap, Kate. I'm looking it up. All you need to do is pour. Yeah, it's got the new badge on it and everything at their website. Oh. Because so, at first it's like, is this really a new thing? And like, yep, turns out it is. So if you're not familiar, Boda Box, is that your go-to, would you say? No. Okay. I haven't done it. No, I, I haven't bought a Boda Box in a long time. No? Yeah. 
I did some Snoop Dogg 19 crimes, though, over the weekend. It was delish. THC infused? No, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry, Kate. <laughs> what are you going to do? So, Boda Box is boxed wine for the unfamiliar. Most times it's boxed mm-hmm. wine, but in this particular case, look at that margarita in a box. Looky there. What will they think of next? Matt, what would you guess the most neighborly city is in the United States? The most neighborly, uh, St. Joseph, Missouri, Kate. I know. That was my guess, too. Oh, sure. And? Didn't make, yeah. Didn't make. Unfortunately, St. Mm-hmm. Joe didn't make the top 10. Womp womp. But I'm shocked that a New York town made the most neighborly. When I think of neighborly places, I don't think New York. That's probably <laughs> upstate, I, right? Yeah. Rochester, New York. Number two is Madison, Wisconsin, which that kind of sounds, you know, neighborly with the Wisconsins and the, they're just so yeah. nice up there. Uh, Provo, <laughs> Utah, number three, Oxnard, California. Have you ever heard of Oxnard, California? I have not, Oxnard. Doesn't that sound like, hey, we're going to name this town. Go get the eight-year-old to name yeah. this town. Oxnard. Oxnard. Yeah. In Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now, since there's no like Kansas, Missouri, or Iowa tie to the neighborly cities, you know, I thought I would tell you in case you're looking on doing some, you know, some traveling, or maybe you are listening in Madison, Wisconsin, and you're like, hey, gave us a shout out. We're neighborly. Yay. Yeah. So, neighbor.com, based on residents' charitable giving generosity, happiness, and well-being. So that's also something we can strive to. There you go. Yeah. Let's be more neighborly. Reach for the clouds, at least. (laughs) Okay, Kate, the ad-supported Netflix is coming November 3rd. Oh, no. What do you mean? Ad-supported, because then we're going to have to watch ads. Oh, well, for some people, it's worth the trade-off. So they're thinking five minutes of ads an hour. And seven bucks. Oh. That makes it a lot more affordable for people. Okay. What? I was just thinking, I think I would be like, it was like across the board, everybody. Oh, no. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Never mind. So the current plans are anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks a month, depending on the number of devices or if you want to be able to stream in 4K. And so this one will have lower video quality. 720p, high definition, Kate. Okay. Yeah. Basic with ads is what it's called. And actually, I think it's arriving earlier than initially thought, November 3rd. That's coming up real quick. It's my brother's birthday. Oh, look at that. Happy birthday. Yeah. You can get him an ad-supported Netflix. Get him a month of ad-supported Netflix. Yeah, I, I bet you he's already got Netflix. No, oh, but does he have yeah. the ad? He doesn't have the ads, though, in there. No. Right. No. And also, this version of Netflix doesn't allow you to download shows. Oh, okay. So you can't take it very e- as easily as easily la, in the car or plane or whatever. But Netflix with ads, seven bucks a year starting November third. If you care, dear listener, and if you don't care, I really wouldn't sign up for it either personally. But okay. <laughs> It did sound like you were pushing it there, but nope, not going to sign up for it. No, no, I'm, cl- I'm clearly not a. Sp- paid spokesperson for netflix either so i can't lie to you like in some of the commercials we have here on the radio station right kate (laughs) just kidding kidding kidding. matt there's a guy who was having brain surgery in italy and his doctors wanted him to be awake so they asked him to do something that he loves to do and then he does all the time while he was having surgery what do you think that was Okay. See, hmm. Mm-hmm. Yo-yo. No. Wouldn't that be amazing if I guessed correct? Yeah, but you're kind of on the right track. Playing something. Okay. Nintendo Switch. No, saxophone. Saxophone, wow. Yeah. They wanted to make sure yeah. that he didn't lose his memory and he had full use of his hands and high cognitive function. Yeah, I think that's a standard deal, right? If you're having brain surgery that they have to make sure you're not stroking out or whatever. That's not an official medical term, but yeah. I don't think it is. Yeah, but I to be awake during brain surgery just shocks me. 
Like, I don't know that I would want to be awake while you are in my brain. I don't think you can feel it. No, 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 no. I think being aware, though. Mm -hmm. Like you are digging around in my brain. Yeah, hearing all all the... Yes. The noises that happen. I'm not sure if that's the noises that actually happen or not, but... Conversations like, well, is that bad? Is that good? Did he have to move his head while he was playing the saxophone? Would that have messed with the surgeon? Would the surgeon be like, hey, could you play something a little bit more cheery? (laughs) I think they're strapped in. I imagine. I would hope so. And then I feel like he would need some kind of mount to hold the saxophone up to his face. Hmm. How about that? But the surgery was a success. So that's good. I just think it's crazy. It wasn't Kenny G, was it? It was not okay. Kenny G. That's the saxophone person I know. And I don't think I know any other ones. Not famous ones, at least. Yeah, I'm out. Okay. 91% of workers say their messages have been misunderstood or misinterpreted. Kate? True. One in five. <laughs> yeah, true. Good job. Yeah. One in five say they've been reprimanded, demoted, or fired because of it. This is mostly over email. Whoa. Roughly half of workers overthink the communications they send. 62% say worrying about miscommunication at work affects their overall mental health. True. And that, <laughs> yes. And, I mean, you're on a roll with this quiz. I know. All this worrying, over explaining, and punctuating is costing U.S. businesses at least $128 billion each year, Kate? What? I thought you were going to say yes. <laughs> no. It's shocking. A little bit there. Reading carefully is the new listening. Writing clearly is the new empathy. And a phone or video call is worth a thousand emails. I definitely agree with that last one. Yes. As previously discussed, you you and I are these people. These ones who are like, uh, sending an email because there's no tone there. And then I definitely overthink the email. Yeah. Then maybe send an emoji. And then next thing you know, you read a study that says that, you know, the Gen Z's think you're being passive aggressive with that thumbs up. So. Oh. Well, give up. Get, yeah, get, get people on the phone or walk over to them. Walk Pot- that potentially a hundred percent. Yeah, This was not an email. This was a conversation down the hall. Come on. You need to get your steps in anyway. Also, fewer meetings, please. Less meetings. I would say that I overthink punctuation yeah. because I want to use an exclamation point. So, you know, I'm excited but then I want to use period so that you know that I'm professional. But at right. the same time, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, as a journalist and major, too, I really don't like exclamation points. How do you feel about triple exclamation points? Well, in that case, I'm all for it. Right? Right? No, but double exclamation point, mm-mm, that looks weird. But triple, that's the safe spot. I think so. Yeah. Matt, the U.S. Postal Service is Raising the price of stamps. No. Next year, 2023, stamps will go from 60 cents to 63 cents. Wow, I didn't even know they were 60 cents yet. I didn't either. I've got the forever, I've got like two rolls of forever stamps. Yeah, time to start hoarding forever stamps. Yeah. Inflation is adding 1 billion to the Postal Service's operating budget. Do they even sell non-forever stamps? I don't know if they do. Yes. They do? Yes. Oh, okay. Like the fancy stamps, like the Christmas stamps, like the... Elvis, Fat Elvis. Yes. Yes. Really? Okay. All the stamps where they honor people okay. and okay. Arbor Day and yeah. Arbor Day. I was just trying to think of something like kind of yeah out there, but yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Trees are great. You guys got pumpkin patching yet? We... Have gone pumpkin patching, but not like pumpkin patching. We did a drive through option because we needed to get our neighbor who's sick some pumpkins. Oh, so okay. like I left the car running. We grabbed like eight pumpkins and then we got the H at a Dodge. So we have not gone to like take advantage of like grabbing our own pumpkins and yeah. having some warm cider and wearing our flannel. Yeah. yeah, no, we haven't done that yet. Positioning the family against some, you know, a background of pumpkins and hay and taking photos. Yeah. No, I used to do that all the time when the girls were little, but no, yeah. we haven't done that this year. Prop a baby on a bale of hay is a good look. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. What about you, Matt? You been to a pumpkin patch? Every day, Kate. No. You gotta find the happiness. I, I have not been to, oh, maybe that is the place I need to go. Yeah. Over happiness at the pumpkin patch. I haven't been to a pumpkin patch in forever, no. 
Probably not since I was a little kid. There's a pumpkin patch by our house that we drive by every morning and they've got all the pumpkins ready, ready, ready. And we drive by at night and it's like, oh, they got to refill. Oh, really? Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, a lot of pumpkins. And I forget, you are or are not carving a pumpkin? We might. We have not, but we might this year because the kids have asked for it and we're doing a family Halloween party. So we might like carve a pumpkin yes. at the party. Yeah. You think I'll use like one of those stencils and, you know, do a, I don't know, a, a pumpkin Betty White or something? Something extravagant. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, to be honest, Matt, I don't think I've got the patience for it. I think I'm going like, I might take a pencil and draw some triangles and do a mouth, but I don't, I don't think I've got the patience to like be detailed on a pumpkin. I saw something. Yeah. Creative squirrel skillfully uses his teeth to carve a face into a pumpkin. So you can put, I don't know, peanut butter. I'm not sure what they use on this. I don't think you have to. I think squirrels are a little jerks when it comes to pumpkins. Well, you need to potentially (laughs) give the squirrel like extra space because you want the squirrel to be able to, you know, like you draw the face on the pumpkin. Okay. And then the squirrel comes and eats the face out. Eats the face. Eats the face out <laughs> because it did bath salts. <laughs> oh, I did see something with if you have chickens, you could, you know, do a little bit of a design and then your chickens will peck. Like I saw a Kansas okay. City family. They did a ch- an, an arrowhead and the chicken pecked the arrowhead out. And I thought it was pretty cute. But you're right. You've got to put something on there. But I always hear my our school friends complain about the they can't put their pumpkins out because the squirrels are jerks and they just eat them squirrels yep they got after my tomatoes too oh man i think tomatoes taste better than raw pumpkin though i agree i'd go after your tomatoes too gotta add a lot of sugar to pumpkin to make it i think i think i don't know pumpkin seeds are okay are they you don't have you haven't had them before no oh well you haven't lived no People talk about doing their own pumpkin seeds and everything. I'm like, you're crazy. Yeah, here you go. How to train squirrels to carve your pumpkin this Halloween. Okay. On the article. Peanut butter. Yep, that's it. Put peanut butter on your design and then they'll just Mm -hmm. eat up the face. Yeah, you got to kind of use a drill though, I guess. So you can get the peanut butter, you know, into the eventual eye sockets. Oh, okay. So that way the squirrel has to dig for it, you know. These things look like nightmare fuel, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) This poor pumpkin, this poor jack-o'-lantern.